Let's talk about the worst drinks that can dissolve your teeth, okay? Now I'm talking about dissolving your enamel around your teeth. Enamel is a very complex substance. It is the hardest substance in your entire body. It's harder than bone. But if we look at bone, the jawbone is the hardest of all the bones. And so the question is, what has the capacity to dissolve this enamel and give you cavities? Is it just the acids or certain things in the foods? Well, we're gonna talk about that. Let's first talk about different things that you can drink that are acidic. Now, when I talk about acidic, I'm talking about pH, and the pH goes from 1 to 14, 14 being extremely alkaline and 1 being extremely acid. And right in the middle, 7, you have something neutral, okay? So the higher the pH above 7, the more alkaline it is, and the lower things are below 7, the more acid things are. And so if you were going to talk about a pH of 1, you're talking about battery acid. And then if we go up one to three, we're dealing with hydrochloric acid and acid in your stomach. And when we're dealing with uh, distilled water, we're dealing with completely neutral seven. Mineral water is slightly above seven. It can actually go up to eight, uh, sometimes even nine because of the dissolved minerals and the um, bicarbonates they're called, which is uh, slightly alkaline. Now let's talk about lemon juice. Lemon juice has a pH between two and three, so it's very, very acidic. But typically, when you drink lemon water, you're going to be putting a small amount of lemon juice into water. You're not going to basically bathe your mouth with lemons necessarily, but you might. But basically, you're going to take a, a tablespoon of lemon juice uh, and put it in your water. And so if we combine the water plus the lemon, the pH actually rises to roughly about 5.5. Now, if we take apple cider vinegar, which is also a very acidic between two and three because of the acetic acid, um, you're also not going to drink that straight. Hopefully you're not gonna drink that straight. You're gonna dilute it with water and the pH is gonna come up to about 4.5 to maybe five, depending on if you're using a tablespoon or a teaspoon. And then we get into the carbonated waters, right? You have carbonic acid and that could fluctuate between five to 5.5 to maybe even six. So carbonated water is slightly acidic. And then we have coffee, which is acidic, it's a five. And tea, which roughly is about the same, but maybe a little bit less acidic. So five to 5.5. And then you have beer, which is acidic. We have four to 4.5. And then we have soft drinks like Coke, which is roughly between 2.4 to three. So that's actually very, very acidic. And so when we're dealing with pH and enamel, you start to get demineralization, which means the breakdown of minerals in your teeth, which are about 96% minerals at a pH about 5.5. But it's all about how long that your teeth are exposed to these acids. So if you're drinking apple cider vinegar diluted with water or lemon, or drinking coffee for a short period of time, it's not nearly as bad as if you were gonna chronically do it all day long. So we have one variable of exposure, and then we have another variable of how acid something is. And then we have another variable that I wanna talk about, which is actually probably the most important um, factor, and that is your own saliva. Now your saliva normally should be between 6.2 to 7.6, okay? With an average of being slightly acidic, but not too much, but I'd say 6.7. Now in saliva, you have minerals, you have sodium, you have calcium, you have potassium, you have bicarbonates that help buffer acids. You have antimicrobial factors, you have immune factors, you have cortisol, and you have enzymes. So you may drink certain things periodically through the day, but really, the saliva in your mouth is there chronically. It's always there. So the pH of your saliva is a much more important factor to buffering these acids because one of the purpose of saliva is to buffer some of the acids and also reduce the bacterial count. And that's another factor I'm going to talk about. The bacteria in your mouth. The bacteria in your mouth, if fed certain things like carbs, start to ferment these carbohydrates and start to change the pH in your mouth. And so 
the bacteria can keep your pH very acid. And the bacteria are usually at the root of this dissolving of your enamel. And yes, you guessed it. It's the carbohydrates. I'm talking about sugar that really makes your mouth very acidic, not directly, but indirectly because they feed the bacteria that then produce byproducts, which are acidic. So normally when you drink apple cider vinegar, diluted or lemon water, it's not a really big factor unless you also have all these bacteria that are constantly producing these acids in your mouth um, all that long. And so the worst thing that you can drink that will dissolve your teeth is something with acid and sugar at the same time. And yes, I'm talking about juice, especially if you're a young child or even a baby. The worst thing to feed a baby is juice because you're, it's basically pure sugar with acids. And the younger you are, the less strong the enamel is. Babies are very, very susceptible to having things dissolve the teeth because the enamel has not developed into a very strong layer yet. So you never want to give your baby juice, not to mention give your baby soda, which I've seen before, which I have to withhold myself because sometimes people are offended if I speak up. Now, since we're on the topic of children, if the child is consuming things like uh, sour candy, where you have a stickiness of the candy, you have the sugar, and then you have these candies that are very, very acid, like that would be very, very bad to give a child. And then you have the child that's sucking on a lollipop, right? Constant exposure to sugar or chewing gum all day, which I used to do as a child. Or what about sports drinks, which are basically sugar water, or energy drinks, which are sugar water, or even dried fruit. All these things are going to breed more bacteria that are going to acidify your mouth and potentially dissolve your teeth. And um, I also forgot to mention in soft drinks, you have a very specific type of acid called phosphoric acid. And phosphoric acid is probably the worst acid to dissolve teeth because it starts to leach out the calcium. Now, there's two other factors I want to talk about. Number one is that um, you really want to look at this problem as a systemic problem. If someone's a diabetic or a pre-diabetic or they have insulin resistance because they're consuming a lot of carbs, then we're dealing with a chronic level of high blood glucose, which does come into the teeth indirectly through the roots. Your teeth have a blood supply. So a lot of times people have this idea that it's just the tooth exposed to sugar in your mouth that is a big problem. But what about internally? What about the roots of the tooth? If you have high blood sugars, that's a systemic cause of a breakdown of your tooth as well, but from the inside out. And uh, also let's talk about the uh, socket that the tooth um, is in, the gums, okay, which require a, a good amount of vitamin C because it's all collagen. And the vitamin C complex help make up collagen. And there's a very interesting relationship between the chemistry of sugar and the chemistry of vitamin C. They're near identical. So when someone is consuming sugar all day or exposing their mouth to sugar, the body will not absorb vitamin C at the same time. So if given a choice, the body will always take up sugar uh, before vitamin C. So in other words, sugar blocks vitamin C. And what do you think that's gonna to do to your gums? In fact, if you ever look at someone that has bleeding gums or red swollen gums, that is a classic vitamin C deficiency. It's a subclinical version of scurvy or even scurvy itself. Gingivitis and bleeding gums is a symptom of scurvy. But in reality, nowadays, it's probably just consuming too much sugar and the vitamin C cannot be absorbed. So should you be concerned about drinking apple cider vinegar and lemon in your water if it's diluted? Well, not necessarily if you're on a low carb diet, but you can always just use a straw to avoid the exposure of your teeth. And then when you're done with these drinks, you can always just drink some water to flush out some of these acids. But your saliva it has a job of buffering these acids. So an average person produces about like three cups of saliva every single day. And for my friend in Germany, Dennis, who still is trying to figure out what that converts into milliliters, one cup, which is actually less than this, is about 750 milliliters. 
or 25 ounces. Now that you have more awareness on what can affect the enamel on your teeth, I think it's really important to understand now the benefits of apple cider vinegar and lemon water. Check this one out right here.